Welcome back to our KO Language series. Today, we're going to start a new series that focuses on some listening strategies that you'll need to be successful on the KO test. We're going to focus in on the long listening passages. So today will be our first practice for these skills. Now, there are a few things to note about the way the listening part of the KO test is structured. So first of all, it is an academic lecture and you will have around 11 questions to answer as you're listening. You're only going to hear the audio play once. There is no opportunity to pause the lecture and you can't rewind it or replay it later. So it's really important to focus on it as it's playing through that first and only time. Focus on what you do understand from the lecture as you're listening. If you do encounter a vocabulary word or a phrase that you, you are not familiar with, try your best just to let that go and continue listening in live time as that lecture progresses. Gather as much information as you can understand and use that information to answer the questions on the test. Make sure that you answer every single question on the test itself, even if you have to guess because you're not sure. You would never lose marks for answering a question incorrectly, but if you left something blank, you would automatically receive no points for that particular question. So it's really better to guess and have the chance at least of getting the answer correct. So those are some nice strategies to take with you as you begin your practice. Now, the way that the long listening passages are set up follows a very specific routine on the Kale test. The very first thing that's going to happen, even before you listen to the lecture, is that you're going to be given approximately two and a half minutes to preview the questions and the answer choices. So you're very, going to very quickly skim read those questions, pull out the keywords from those questions, and tuck those words into the back of your mind, into your memories, so that at least you'll understand which words or ideas to listen for once you hear the lecture play shortly. And the same goes for the answer choices. If you can quickly read them over, so once again, you're familiar with the ideas at least, it will help you maybe narrow down your selections and answer those questions more efficiently. Now, once that two and a half minutes has passed, the lecture is going to start playing automatically. And it will be around five minutes, maybe a little bit longer, give or take, depending on the exact test question you have. Your job is to answer as many questions as you can while that lecture is playing. So it's a bit of multitasking. You're listening and you're answering questions as you go. Most of the questions on the test will follow generally the same order of the ideas that the speaker's presenting to you. So that will help keep you focused to a point. After that lecture has finished playing, you will be given an additional three minutes or thereabouts to review your answers. So this is when you'll go back and if you've left any question blank, this is the time you'll take now to answer those questions. Again, even if you have to guess, make sure you've answered something. You can also use the remaining seconds to double check your other answers. Make sure everything is as correct as you can get it before that timer hits zero. So one more emphasis on this important point because you are listening to the lecture and trying to answer questions as that lecture plays, it will be very difficult to take detailed notes. I would encourage you not to try even to take many detailed notes while you're listening to the lecture. Your primary goal, the most important thing, is to answer as many questions as you can while that lecture is playing. If you finish a little bit ahead of time in the review section at the end, that might be a nice time to write down a few ideas as you uh, can recall that the lecture talked about, just to jot down some notes perhaps. Now remember in later passages, when you do the writing sections on the KL test, some writing sections will actually ask you to use details from the long listening passages. The computer itself in those cases will provide for you an outlined summarized version of the main ideas from the lecture. So this is another reason why it's not terribly important for you to make detailed notes as you listen, because the computer will provide an outline later for you that will help you to remember what these key ideas were. Let's look at what the screen actually appears as as you take this test. 
So we're looking right now at part four, which is a long listening section. You will have long listening lectures to complete in parts three, four, and five on the Kale test, but we're going to look at part four today. You'll notice as well, we mentioned there are around 11 questions to answer. 11 questions will not fit on one computer screen. So as a result, there are multiple screens or pages to go through as you complete all of these questions. So we can only fit question one on this first page. You'll notice that page one in that little red box there where the page tabs are, page one has been selected. So that's how we know we're on page one. Once you complete question one and you're ready to move on to the second page, you would just simply click on page two with your mouse and you would continue clicking on those page numbers until you've moved all the way to five and answered all the questions. Now there is a next button. Do you see it in the top right corner? It's blue and it has the word next on it. I'm going to strongly encourage you not to use this next button. The only reason you would use next is once you've completed all of these questions, if you have a few seconds remaining in your review time and you don't want to wait for the timer to count back to zero, you could click next and then you would just move on to the next kale question. Remember though that once you've clicked next, there's no back button, so you can never return to a screen if you've decided that you had some more work to do. So again, on the listening, long listening sections, it's going to go pretty quickly as it is. Your time is very precious. I would strongly encourage you to use all the time available to you to finish answering the questions and then double check your answers until that clock counts down to zero. It's up to you, but that would be my best advice. Now remember, we start with the preview time. You have about two and a half minutes to read through the questions and answers on the test itself before the lecture actually plays. So your countdown clock for the preview time is right here in the center of the screen. It counts down in seconds, but 150 seconds is the same as two and a half minutes. So as soon as that preparation clock counts back to zero, that's when the lecture will automatically begin to play. So if this was a real test right now and we're just starting, what we would do then, that clock would start counting down, that preparation time, and we would quickly then start working through these screens and becoming familiar with the question keywords. So we read through this question and it says, match the following animals with the periods in which they were domesticated. So these are the keywords that my mind sort of gravitates towards. We're going to tuck those words into the back of our minds or our memories. So we at least have a sense of what we might be listening for once we hear the speaker begin. And I guess it wouldn't hurt to quickly look over the answer choices. So we know that we're keeping our ears open for mention of these particular animals. So the speaker at some point is going to talk about dogs, cats, pigs, and oxen. And it's our job here to match up these animals under the correct time period that she talks about in the lecture. So we would read through that question, then you would click number two in the page tab above there. You see how it's highlighted? And we would continue this process on the second page. So we now see questions two and three. So question two looks like it's all about the domestication of dogs. And quickly, as I look at the answer choices, we're listening in for information about how dogs might have been domesticated because of reciprocal advantage, how they were first used to hunt in the Middle East, how they were common among pastoral nomads, and how they are related with the invention of the wheel. Now, one tip that I'll share right now as well is when you listen to the lecture itself, you might not hear these exact vocabulary words mentioned. What you might hear instead are synonyms or paraphrased ideas. So ideas that mean the same as one of these answer choices, but the words might be different. So for Kale, it's really important to have a well-developed vocabulary so that you can match up these ideas as you listen. All right, and so on. You would complete this uh, review or the preview time rather until you manage to get to the end of screen five. So you read through all 11 questions and answer choices, at which point the, uh, the lecture would automatically begin once those two and a half minutes have passed on by. So I'm going to play the first part of this lecture for all of us to listen to. The lecture itself is about five and a half minutes long, but I'm only going to play the first minute and 20 seconds or so for you. So at some point within that first part that you're going to hear, you're going to hear the answer to this question. 
So I'm hoping that at home, maybe you've got a pen and paper handy, you can write down the answers as you hear the speaker talk, because this is exactly what you'll be doing on the Kale test. Of course, you'll be answering it on the computer screen, but for today's practice, perhaps you can use a paper and pen. All right, I'll play the lecture now, and let's see if you can match all of these animals to the correct time period based on what you hear. Here we go. Seeing domestic animals every day. Some animals, such as cats and dogs, often serve as pets. Other animals, cows, chickens, pigs, provide food and a variety of materials to people. Animals also often facilitate people's work. Elephants, horses, and camels are some examples. We know that some of these animals descended from wild animals, which means that they somehow became domesticated. When did this change happen and how? Modern evidence suggests that the first animals were domesticated around 12,000 years ago. We're talking about dogs. Later, between 9,000 and 7,000 BC, cows or domestic cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs were domesticated in the Middle East. These animals would become a major source of food for ancient civilizations. Starting from 4,000 BC, working animals like oxen became more common both in the Middle East and Europe. Cats, which started appearing as pets since 3000 BC, retained their wild roots more than other animals. <laughs> we still see this wild side even today. Okay, so we're stopping the lecture there at that point. Again, it would continue on and you would continue on to the other questions, but somewhere within that part of the lecture, you should have heard the answers to this question. So I'll give you just a few moments more, I guess, to sort it out if you haven't. And what I'd like to do next is show you the transcript of the part of the lecture itself that gives us the answer. Now on the Kale test, you're not going to have a transcript for the listening sections at all. You're going to simply rely on your listening skills and answer each question. But because we are studying together right now and practicing, I thought it would be most helpful if we could at least see the words from the lecture so that we understand exactly where these details are coming from. So you'll see the transcript on the screen. And what I'm hoping you're doing right now is scanning it through to locate the animals mentioned in question number one, as well as those time periods. So the first thing the speaker talked about was 12,000 years ago. And when you heard her say those words, I'm hoping right away your ears perked up and you realize that this was leading into question one. And she specifically mentioned the word dogs. So using your mouse, you would click and drag the word dogs from that box into the answer boxes below. So you've matched up dogs to the period of time, 12,000 years. The next thing that the speaker spoke about was the time period between 9,000 and 7,000 BC. And she did mention several animals. You can see them there in the transcript. But the only animal from that long list of animals that belongs to question one is the word pigs. So that's the only animal we're interested in. So we're going to again, click it and drag it down to the appropriate box here on the answer side. Then we continue in this fashion. I think the next one mentioned was 4,000 BC and we match that up to oxen. You've only got one answer left but she specifically mentioned that cats um, were domesticated in 3000 BC, so more recently. So on the kale test itself, when you actually are completing the click and drag activities, this is what it would look like if you went sort of in one fluid motion. So again, you're listening at the same time as this is happening and you're just clicking and dragging the answers in as the audio is playing. So that's the first question. We're going to do question two today, and then we'll, we'll stop there for the day. We can come back next episode and do some more practice later. But let's focus in on question two now. We've already identified these keywords, so we know we're listening in for information that has to do with the domestication of dogs. So just as we did earlier, I'm going to play a part of this lecture. This little part will be around 45 seconds in length. And somewhere within this, this part, you're going to hear the answer to this question. So I'm hoping you'll be able to identify it by the time this part has finished. Here we go. Animals that primarily serve as food sources, dogs may have had a different path of domestication. The most modern view holds that dogs were domesticated naturally through the mutual benefits of a partnership in hunting. 
humans and wolves hunted the same prey. Wolves could spot the prey easily and harass the prey continuously. Human intellect and weapons meant more efficient hunting and more meat from hunting activities and possibly some scraps for the wolves. Humans would not mind tamer and less aggressive animals around. Naturally, tamer species would stay with humans while more aggressive and more successful animals would stay wild. Okay, so again, somewhere within that part of the lecture, we heard the answer to this question. And what makes this a bit tricky is that none of these exact words were mentioned in the lecture itself. So once again, I'll show you the transcript. This will make it a lot easier as we study. Remember, again, you'll never have a transcript on the official kale test. We're only looking at this as we practice together today. So the very first sentence in this transcript talks about dogs and domestication. So when you heard the speaker use those exact words, you should have been able to match them up at least to the question. The question specifically asks about the domestication of dogs. So again, on the test, you're now ready, your ears are open, and you're listening for mention of one of these four answer choices. So have a quick look at that transcript if you haven't figured out the answer. I'm going to highlight the sentence or the phrase from the, the lecture itself that gives you the answer to this question. Okay, and again, you'll notice that there are no direct matches of vocabulary words. You're looking for a paraphrased ideas. So there are two words in the yellow highlighted section of the transcript that mean the exact same as two words on the answer side. So I'll give you another moment or two to see if you can match them if you haven't already. All right, and I'm going to show you the keywords from the lecture. There they are. The two words are mutual benefits, and you're now trying to match up the words mutual benefits to one of those answer choices. So I'm hoping you're able to match them here. Reciprocal advantage. These two phrases mean the same thing. That's what we mean when we say they're paraphrased ideas. So on the test itself then, you would select answer A as the correct choice, and then you would continue on. Now remember, on the Kale test, the entire lecture will play from beginning to end, and you would finish questions one to 11 all the way through without stopping. Today, we focused on the individual questions just for practice, okay? But again, please don't confuse the real test where there will be no stopping and starting of questions. It will be done in one motion. So let's review, I guess, what we did for our listening strategies. The very first thing, remember, that you will do for the long listening is you'll be given about two and a half minutes to read over those questions and answer choices. You're pulling out those keywords so that you have a better understanding of what to listen for as you listen to the lecture. In the lecture itself, you might be listening for synonyms or paraphrased ideas. So just, again, be open to that. You might not be able to directly match the same words. Your biggest goal is to answer as many questions as you possibly can while the audio is playing. And remember again that most of these answers will be presented in the same order as the lecture itself, within reason. Sometimes there might be questions that rely on you to understand the entire piece. And in that case, it's hard to insert a question in any particular order. But especially for these specific detail questions, they tend to follow the same order that the speaker will refer to them. Again, because you're listening so intently to the speaker and answering questions as the audio is playing, Please do not take your time to make detailed notes. It's much more important to answer those questions. You will have about three minutes at the very end to review your answers. Again, double check that you've answered correctly and that you have answered every single question, even if you have to guess, that's the better strategy. All right, so I hope that you're leaving today's episode with some ideas about how to get started with your long listening practice if you're doing so from home. Join me next week and we'll continue our practice with this skill. See you then.